Well, hello everybody, it's Richard here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, relax for the next few minutes and listen to the latest update that I've got to tell you and what I've been doing at home. And also the tune today, I've got uh, two lovely records to play you, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And of course, um, side nine of The Sounds of Time and um, we're getting towards the end of those, that wonderful record collection. But don't worry, I've got some other things up my sleeve where I think um, I can continue some of this and I've got some lovely Churchill speeches that I think you'll enjoy on LP, if not on 78. Uh, just to uh, update you about uh, things as of the 12th of May 2020 today uh, regarding COVID-19 in the UK. So far there's been a, a no total number of deaths to date, uh, 32,692 deaths and that's a total of 627 people have died today. Uh, the total, um, uh, where is it, the total number of deaths altogether uh, in terms of the tests, tests that are being carried out, uh, 85,293 and that's uh, a total of 2 million tests to date so the government are moving ahead with their testing schemes and um, there's uh, 3,000 cases since yesterday have proved positive. So out of that 85,000 tests, uh, 3,000 people have tasted positive to coronavirus um, so far. Uh, to date there's been 226,463 um, positive tests overall and um, so um, things are moving ahead. Uh, the total number of testing that's going on has increasing but at the same time those people are living in care homes the numbers are increasing still though they're plateauing slightly despite what the government are actually are telling us um, it's possible that there could be as many as 36,000 deaths in the UK to date if you take into all those into account all those cases where it may not have been put on the death certificate that the person had COVID-19 so I think that's more realistic figure and certainly care homes are struggling as I predicted a lot of the small ones are now and some of the larger medium sized medium to larger ones are now struggling to actually maintain their occupancies because of deaths and uh, the government have been asked today what uh, they're going to be doing about that the furlong street scheme has been extended to the end of October which is good news and hopefully those people will receive full salaries in terms of the uh, 80 and 20 percent that's being uh, given out so what happens is that 80 percent of that is normally provided by government and then 20 percent of that is provided by the organization uh, it, um, but that may be re reducing so that as we get nearer October the government are suggesting that there may be some sort of um, uh, transitional arrangement in place. To date uh, the scheme is costing something like I think it was uh, where are we I did write it down where are we I think we said about eight eight billion pounds a month so this the scheme that's supporting businesses in the UK which is internationally very good is eight billion pounds a day that money will have to be paid back but it will be in the form of a obviously um, uh, of a uh, of a loan arrangement from government and that will be in the long term arrangement so um, things are not too good still though the we have the five pillars or now that we have in place and we're getting getting better you're now allowed to socialize with uh, one other person in an open space and to go back to work if you can otherwise you must stay at home so if you can't avoid working from home then you can return to work but your employer will be expected to make provision for that with um, some form of screening or whatever so it's still a bit confusing for the public though you can take as much exercise as you like uh, from now on as opposed to one piece of exercise I think some of this is all a bit academic at times to be honest because people make their own minds up about what they're doing as I reported yesterday when I was running out running there was certainly a lot more traffic about and when the lady I spoke to at the checkout at Waitrose was reporting the same when she came into work so I think people are making their own decisions um, about how they're going about it but the sector itself that I represent uh, still finding it quite difficult to get a hold of PPE on many occasions and also some staff have been furloughed uh, 
particularly central office staff or head office staff where they can work from home they will if they have to work at the office then what they're doing is those people are working remotely but also doing other tasks so businesses are adapting but the new the new normal is certainly going to be very different there wasn't a big spike yesterday of the number of people traveling on public transport particularly on commuter trains and also on the tube which is a bit concerning when we're supposed to be keeping our social distancing and let's not forget this virus is very nasty and uh, you know and uh, once you've recovered from it there's still a long way to go uh, to get the um, to get the virus out of your system and a lot of people are being left with life-changing conditions from it like kidney failure and so forth so uh, my advice to anybody out there is to keep your social distancing and abide by the rules and make sure you wash your hands regularly and swab things down when you get home from shopping like I do anyway on a more cheery note uh, I've been busy today I've been doing some work on my garage and I'll post some pictures of that I've got the first coat on after all the prep work I've done um, and so the garage is now going to be looking resi a resplendent red as opposed to Oxford blue um, so I'm not sure I've forgotten what the colour is actually called but it's red it's a red colour looks a bit orangey when you first see the first coat but I did finish that today as the weather's been quite nice and warm though you can see I've got a t-shirt on but I've got a jumper on top of that because there's times when that breeze is quite chilly I have sat outside for a bit of lunch today and a cup of coffee and a cup of tea uh, in between working on the computer which is quite good and taking calls and that but um, you know um, it doesn't feel quite like a summer like we had last week but never mind good news is I've got a couple of very nice doves living in my one of my bushes and they've just had a, had a little brood of, of doves out there so um, it's quite nice seeing them flapping around the place on the bad side of course is they still poop on all the cars which is a bit concerning but never mind I'm sure I'll get over that so on to the records. Um, the first one you may have heard before. I have played this record before, but it's as you know, it's, I've got a rather a comedy theme that going with uh, my record. So this one's on the Eclipse label. Nobody loves a fairy when she's forty, and this is by Jenny Howard, um, and it's a really nice copy. This actually quite sounds. It's on a. I think this is actually a. Or I get it wrong. I think it's a. I think they call this. Yeah, it's more like an eight inch actually than anything else. An eight inch. Uh, diameter record this one and uh, so it came out in uh, 1932 I looked it up today so quite a nice record about the same age as the gramophone so quite nice and the other one is on the imperial label I played the first side yesterday tiptoes through the tulips and I thought I'd pay the second side today painting the clouds with sunshine which I thought was quite nice really and uh, there's some non-pc bits in there which I find rather rather interesting the the, the uh, term of gay gay i find amusing when um, in this context it means happy as opposed to what we know it means today so anyway another nice record there and then finally uh, we're getting towards the end of um, the oral sounds of time and we're on to number nine today so this is um is it number nine yeah number nine today we had eight yesterday so this one is tapestry empire and you hear Her Majesty the Queen speaking on this one when she's quite young. And of course, um, the breakup of the empire, the independence of India, Lord Mountbatten and all those uh, pieces that we all know so well. So do enjoy that. And uh, we've got one more side tomorrow before I switch to some other sort of something else. But I have got something up my sleeve, as I say. I've got some rather nice Churchill speeches and also um, a, a, a sort of synopsis of the whole pack I have to music which sounds quite nice but that's on an LP as opposed to a 78 but anyway um, I don't think there's anything else to talk about today uh, garage I've done that um, I'm not going to do a YouTube of the day today I'll do one tomorrow uh, because I've been too busy to read to watch anything but um, I hope everyone enjoyed the last few I've been doing if you have joined uh, subscribe to those channels do let me know and also let me know what you're doing at the moment um, if you'd like me to um, mention anything at all, any shout outs to anybody, I'm very happy to do that. I know, and uh, I've also, uh, if you've got any YouTube channels that you're particularly like, I know Paul Wilson, you sent me a list uh, a while ago, which I have looked, I don't think I've got around looking at all those yet, but there's anybody else out there who would like me to do that, and uh, I'd be happy to do that. So until tomorrow, take care, keep safe, and see you all very soon. Bye for now.
Two of the day to keep coronavirus away on the Eclipse label. Nobody loves a fairy when she's 40. By Jenny Howard. <laughs> Behold in me the demon king. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Come here, remove your hat. But I am fairy Snowdrop, so my answer is rats. Look at the fairy. I am the fairy godmother. You look more like a grandmother. For years a fairy queen I've been. For years I've foiled the demon king. But alas, I'm getting on. The years have flown somehow. And I feel that fairy snowdrop isn't wanted now. Nobody loves a fairy when she's 40. Nobody loves a fairy when she's old. She may still have a magic power, but that is not enough. They like their bit of magic from a younger bit of stock. When once your silver star has lost its glitter, and your tinsel looks like rust instead of gold. Your fairy days are ending when your wand has started bending. No one loves a fairy when she's old. How many times have I been heard to say by one and all, Tis I, your fairy godmother, you shall go to the ball. Tis I who helped Aladdin find the cave that wasn't there. Twas I who made Wick Dippington turn round, and then Lord Mayor. I've been the spirit of the flowers, the fairy daffodil. I've been a fairy of the wind, and suffer from its hill. Nobody loves a fairy when she's forty. Nobody loves the fairy when she's old. The face of this immortal one to many has appealed. But gone is the illusion that you can be sold and healed when you have lost your little fairy simple. And the moth holes in your dress let in the cold. You stand there shouting, what oh, but they all pass by your grotto. No one loves a fairy when she Hope you enjoyed that. A novelty record on the Eclipse label, which is a six inch. Enjoy. On the Imperial label, painting the clouds with sunshine.
of moon, beautiful hue, colored with gold and old rose. Playing the clown, trying to drown all of my woes. Though things may not look right, they'll all turn out all right. If I keep painting the clown with sunshine. On the oral label, The Sounds of Time, Tapestry Empire. Now an empire that had shared the sacrifice of war turned to cultivate the fruits of peace. And to the Union of South Africa and the Rhodesias came the British royal family, personifying the intimate relationship that linked a far-flung commonwealth with the mother country. It was a happy tour, radiating friendship, kinship and song. And overshadowed, as King George VI himself put it in a speech at Pretoria, only by the grave industrial crisis that was then paralyzing the mother country. And the only unhappy memory that I shall have of them I will be due to my constant anxiety about the cruel ordeal which the people of Great Britain have undergone since I left them at the end of January. During this tour, Princess Elizabeth, heir to the throne, came of age and broadcast this solemn dedication to the Commonwealth. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. The family was growing up. Three of its members, India, Burma and Ceylon, now grown to adulthood, were restless for independence. And with a mingled pride and regret of the eternal parent, Britain handed them the key of the door. On June the 3rd, 1947, a great Indian leader and patriot, Jawaharlal Nehru, broadcast his acceptance of the British government's formula for the transfer of power. We are little men serving great causes, but because the cause is great, something of that greatness falls upon us also. Mighty forces are at work in the world today and in India, and I have no doubt that we are ushering in a period of greatness for India. And two months later, the last Viceroy of the British Raj, Lord Mountbatten, was ceremonially sworn in at New Delhi as the first Governor-General of a self-governing Indian Dominion. I, Louis Francis Albert Victor Nicholas, Viscount Mountbatten of Burma, do swear that I will, will and truly serve His Majesty, King George the Sixth, his heirs and successors, in the office of Governor General of India. As the year drew to a close, India's new Governor General flew to take his part in the pageantry of a royal romance that thrilled Britain and the world. A young princess stood beside her sailor bridegroom in Westminster Abbey while the Archbishop of Canterbury joined them in marriage. For as much as Philip and Elizabeth Alexandra Mary have consented together in a holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and there too have given and pledged their troth either to other and have declared the same by giving and receiving of a ring and by joining of hands. I pronounce that they be man and wife together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.